Hello, hello, welcome to Dubai Fashion News, the podcast where you can get to know everything about the fashion industry. Here we will interview fashion designers, influencers, models, photographers, shop owners, you name it and what for, to learn their insights, their stories and the lessons they learn along the way. I'm your host, Araceli Gallego, recording from one of the meeting rooms in my building in Dubai. I'm going to be missing all this because very soon I will need to move to a bigger apartment and I don't know if it will have the same facilities. And uh, why do I need to move? Because I am expecting a baby. Yeah. <laughs> And um, before we welcome him or her, which still we don't know, we need a bigger space. So if any one of you know someone renting a two bedroom plus made in Dubai Marina, preferentially in Al Sahab or in Al Majara, please let me know. I will be forever grateful. And after this cry of help, <laughs> let me introduce you to our lovely guest today. Her name is Shomaila Maurer, but most probably you know her as Emirates Fashionista. She is a beauty and fashion influencer that has a lot of followers on Instagram, like a lot, like almost 100,000 followers. She's going to share with us today how she grew her Instagram following, how she works to keep very high engagement rates, and how brands can work with influencers such as herself. On top of that, she is a master networker and event manager, so in that we got some extra tips. <laughs> Stay put, don't go anywhere. The interview starts right now. Hello, Shamaila. Hi, Ursula. I really am thrilled to have you in the Dubai Fashion News Podcast. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you. <laughs> Today, we're going to learn a lot from you, from everything you've been doing, from your how you grew your Instagram, how is it actually to be an influencer, how do you work with brands, uh, so many things. <laughs> so, I'm going to go straight to the first question, if yes. you don't mind. So, you have an amazing following on Instagram. Yes, dear. How did it start? It? How did you make it grow? Well, it's something that did not happen overnight. Uh, I've been using uh, Instagram for since 2010, and uh, that was the time I started. And uh, I was just posting initially food photos and travel photos like that, and uh, I could not think that time that it could be used for professional life as well, for yeah, business like purpose too. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and then I. Uh, started my activities slowly by slowly, sharing my life about events and the people I meet. And I started to get comments that where did we do the event? When is the next event? And what is the event about? And what do I do? Where I bought my dresses? And where I bought my shoes? And the style is good. So all these things just like kind of motivated me to start doing uh, this and to pay attention more to Instagram. And uh, so the rest is history. There, there is any secret recipe how to actually make the numbers grow when it comes to followers, comments? Because your engagement is huge. I mean, how can we increase the engagement that we have in our accounts? From 6 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> you start that early? I wake up in the morning and uh, that's what my husband always <laughs> tells me that when he goes to bed he sees my phone in my hand and when he wakes up he sees my phone in my hand or I'm on my laptop in the living room uh, replying. So I value my followers a lot and uh, I make sure that when I'm asleep and in the morning when I'm up, well, while I was asleep there were no Thank inappropriate... <laughs> There was there were no inappropriate comments or anything that I need to either reply to them or like there are like you know, strange people as well mm -hmm. on social media too. And then I look at my followers as well. Uh, that if there are new followers and I look at their profiles, I like their pictures and comment on them as well. So that's how I start my day. Basically, you respond to every single comment that is left in your pictures. Yes, on my posts. Yes, it's very valuable. But if it's like in Arabic or another language, then I ask them to please translate <laughs> because I'm myself and I cannot copy paste. So, right. So, so you don't, don't like, kind of know what they are saying. Yeah. So I just like. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Can you please translate that? <laughs> How many hours do you spend on Instagram per day? 
uh, approximately five hours altogether. So in my entire day, yes, in my entire day when I wake up, I'm doing, uh, after my expect connect work, I also check uh, my emails of Emirates Fashionista as well. And from time to time, I go to Instagram if they are asking any questions. So sometimes it's also related to expect connect as well. They're asking me questions about expect connect events too. So Instagram is basically a place where I stay in touch with all these people. All the community. All the communities. Wow. Yes, yeah. So you're also doing the social media of Expat Connect and the event? Yes. Uh, social media okay. of Expat Connect. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes a little bit of designing too. <coughs> uh, Also, yeah. oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. It's, it's fun. Uh, I get to meet many people through that as well. I get to know many uh, people who are moving to Dubai. Uh -huh. So it's, it's uh, amazing. Like it's just not social media. I meet with them in person as well. So it's different. So it's, yeah. it's connections that you're doing maybe online and then eventually they, they move to offline too. Absolutely. I meet them in person as well at my events and I invite them to come and Uh, even from my social platforms, I invite them to um, my own uh, Emirates Spanish fashion and stuff. I just invite my followers. If you're in Dubai, Hello, join us. Here. And they do come. And they do come. It's like oh. many times I take pictures with them and I post. And it's, it's very, it's like a, we're That's creating lovely. a bond over there. That's yeah. lovely. Yeah. You have almost 100,000 followers on Instagram. Massive. Yet you're a very down to earth person, really. I admire that. <laughs> you're always looking for ways to help, uh, always uh, finding ways to collaborate, to connect people. You're always smiling. You're, you're not like you're not the typical influencer that we, first of all, we'll send the red card and then we talk. No, it's, you're kind of like the other way around, and I love that about you. Thank how would you, you describe yourself? Oh, because this is how yeah. I, from the outside, how I perceive you, yeah. and uh, and that's why I called you for this interview because there Thank is a connection, and it's true. I follow her. I'm a fashionista from my personal uh, and from the Dubai Fashion News uh, handles, and. And this is what I see from the outside. Well, how would you describe yourself? First of all, thank you very much. It was very flattering. <laughs> um, well, I think everybody is equal. And uh, it's also coming from my culture. I'm originally from Pakistan. Uh -huh. And uh, when I was 20 years old, I moved to South Korea for about nine years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned the culture in Korea as well to be very... If you go to Korea, everybody is smiling, everybody's in a very good mood. They're going to talk to you nicely. They're going to invite you to eat food. If you're outside in the park... I like to go to Korea. Oh, it's definitely. <laughs> uh, you are outside in the park and they see you for example we really like hiking so we, whenever mm -hmm. we used to go for hiking and if we don't have food in our hand the people would see that and they come to us and it's like would you like to have something with us really and uh, this is how it grows. so all these small small things which are very very valuable and important i brought them uh To Dubai as well and whenever I meet people I like to get to know them and uh, of course like with my smile yeah. I make sure that other people's day also other persons the other person I'm meeting there his or her day is nice as well for my attitude yeah. my personality it's kind of like be kind uh, korean style yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so it's it's just not uh, what i have started doing here it came from uh, like since i was a kid as well and then from korea experiences i learned and then after coming here i'm applying the same thing so i've never changed myself like yeah. it's it's always been like this this yeah. is who you are yes I, know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> i think you're fully cooked <laughs> <laughs> what is your niche my niche is the real women mm -hmm. who love to learn fashion and beauty mm -hmm. just like me who are living the life where who's a like for example i'm a wife mm -hmm. i'm a daughter i'm a sister and i love fashion and beauty at the same time so all the ladies who are at the moment currently struggling with their fashion and beauty what they should wear because like they are going to a family event or they are yeah. going to a cultural event how they can look stylish They don't have to have to just leave everything. Fashion is not about this. So that's what I would like to share. And I love doing that when I hear everybody 
talk to me that oh I really like your style and and sometimes they send me private messages as well as like I really liked it I can wear something like this to my family event or cultural yeah event. good so inspiration just, yeah I I, I just uh, feel very flattered and I love to it encourages me more to do wake up in the morning and create more content through them and work share. on Instagram five hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, uh, this, is, this is the way I can, so the technology has opened many doors it's for true, you. It's true, it's true, definitely. Before yeah. it, this was not even thinkable. Yeah, yeah. And, the world possibility. Seems, and the world seems very small right now, mm -hmm. like you can be connected all the way to US or maybe to any Middle Eastern it's country. So. Uh, Shamila, you are very creative. Thank you. <laughs> how do you help brands? How you know? How do you come up with these crazy ideas to actually boost them or help them achieve what they want? Well, this all comes from my childhood as well. Uh, when I was 13 years old, from the age of 13 to age of 16, I studied uh, grooming, mm -hmm. makeup, uh, um, hair styling, and also sewing, textile designing as well. And when I turned 16, that time uh, I studied Photoshop and also web designing as mm. well. So all this creativity is like since my childhood that was in me. And uh, now as I'm working with the brands, I just need to understand the brand and study the brand. And the rest is just like comes to me. Many times I'm just like doing my hair and some ideas pop up <laughs> and I was like, okay, I should do this today. <laughs> what are we ready now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or uh, when I'm asleep, like sometimes 4 a.m. I just wake up and I was like, okay, I need to write this down and then we're going to use this for our photo shoot or our video okay. content like that. And uh, I observe a lot when we are going to different venues. I'm mm -hmm. outside of different events. Mm -hmm. I also look at the venues. Would that be good? That style would be good for our photo shoot as well or for creating different content. So it always stays in my mind. And when I'm working with different brands, it's just like these ideas pop up. Like, okay, I need to choose that venue that I went uh, like uh, two months ago. Okay. So like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. What uh, brands and designers need to have in mind when working with influencers? It's very important to choose the influencers who align with your uh, brand. You cannot just choose anybody. Like, for example, uh, you are choosing a 16-year-old or a 17-year-old girl for, who is very popular on Instagram because that, that is what reality is. Mm -hmm, People mm -hmm. are becoming yeah, popular. True. Uh, regardless of age or sometimes their parents open their accounts to make mm -hmm. them popular but you cannot ch choose that person to wear a Louis Vuitton so you need to choose the age target as mm -hmm. well and because their followers will be exactly the same for uh, who, what their age is. Mm -hmm. so. So the brand should uh, be careful and, and only not follow numbers Absolutely, but actually yeah, so yeah. who is aligned with the brand value yes. and with their own market wise yes. and also I think they need to pay attention to what they want because I don't think brands know exactly many times what they want if they want to create awareness about their own brand or if they want sales yeah and it will require different uh, strategies from from their side and from your side to get one or another yes First of all, about the numbers, yes, I mean, like, always look at the engagement, mm -hmm. how how the influencers are connected to their followers, mm -hmm. how followers, how much they are loyal, and then also look at their personality as well. I would highly recommend for the brands to meet them in person mm -hmm. and get to know them, just like half an hour meeting, just like get to know them, if they're responding properly, if they are really people's person and you can trust them as well. Mm -hmm. And then after that, start working with them. And there should be a trust and there mm -hmm. should be some understanding between the influencers as well. So it's yeah. very, very important. Many, many influencers work with agencies and uh, yeah. that kind of like blocks all this human contact maybe with other That is also yeah. true. Yeah. That is also true. But yeah. if you have a chance to see them, like even during the campaign, talk right. to them so that in the future you can use the same person. Mm -hmm. So you have to have to make the right choice as well. But, mm -hmm. uh, uh, how they're delivering your like, and you should never uh, let the influencers mislead uh, the audience as well. Mm -hmm. So it should be very fair. You should give the product to an influencer who actually carries it 
So, like, who is representing your brand mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. right way? The right right. way yeah. And it's not always like pose uh, like that. It should be real. So, uh, it's not like a celebrity that you, they're already popular. Whatever they're gonna hold it, people are gonna follow it. Mm-hmm. Influencers, we if we have any product, we need to give our right, correct, honest opinion right. to our followers because we are meeting these people. And that's in how person. we become actually influencers. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> first place. Yeah. I did not know that I was an influencer until people started asking me. At Expect Connect event, they started asking me, like, oh, where did you get your dress? Where did you uh, do your hair? And uh, even my hair color, they asked. And I recommend, like, okay, you can use this product and you can go here. To this salon. Uh-huh. So that's how I start to think like, oh, oh um, what do you call this person <laughs> if I'm doing something like this? And then I start doing research and it's like, oh, you call this uh, yeah, influencers. And that's how it started. Yeah. yeah. So you were not very aware actually that you were I wasn't. I wasn't. I mean, like when... Um, with my sisters, they always used to copy me and I used to get very angry about it. <laughs> Why they were wearing the same thing that I was wearing two days ago? But I did not realize that that's how I was inspiring them as well. Uh, 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 so that was a beautiful thing that I, I shouldn't have thought about. <laughs> <laughs> when we are young, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I'm curious, what did you do before actually becoming an influencer? Before that, I was in Korea. Korea, South Korea, for about nine years. Mm -hmm. I graduated from Korean University, Seoul National University of Technology, and graduated from English department. I also studied uh, fashion, a little bit of credits. I was, I did a small fashion show in Korea too. And then Korean Airlines hired me to be in Dubai because of my Korean language skills. They decided to bring me to Dubai. I had no idea about Dubai. Oh my god! And uh, they put me in the regional headquarters on Sheikh Zayed Road uh, as a marketing specialist, and I was working there. And then after that, I worked in Fort Calabrese. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's on Palm Jumeirah as a real estate broker. It's licensed here to be a real estate broker. It was fun. And now, currently, I work for Expat Connect, which is a social networking website. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just a year over old, and with 40,000 Expat Connect members are there, with mm-hmm. 400 communities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually been in some events of uh, Expat Connect. It's yeah. just that we met there also. Uh, and for people that are not in Dubai, yes. Expat Connect is kind of like a community of expats. Yes. Uh, when you're new in town, you can go and you will meet people. Eventually, they may become your friends. Yes. Otherwise, it's just fun networking, people that maybe can help you in your job, or maybe you have common interests. It's yes. really good, and it's very well organized. Every event is different from one another. It's always fun. There's always, like, a, a, like awards and prizes to win. So, <laughs> and it's always very well organized. So, Thank and, uh, and uh, Shomaila is actually the organizer of all these events. Yes. So, <laughs> Well, like, Spectinate is, a, is a, an amazing platform where you get to meet many people. And if you are new to Dubai, you're planning to move to Dubai, you can just sign up on the website. It's free. And then you can join the communities according to your interest and your profession, and then, um, I, yeah, you attend the events and you get to know people. Mm-hmm. And at our events, our team is always there. We're going to connect you to with different people. And uh, that's how it that's goes. Awesome. Yeah. I want to ask you about the event management part of it because you organize these events and they are, there's many of them, actually. And so they're very often and also they're very different from one another. How do you do it? How do you organize the, the venues, the location, the concept, how do you put it all together? So first of all, when the, uh, the client comes to us, and for example, um, golf course, um, um, Creek Golf, they came to us and they wanted us to organize an event. Oh, for... so they, the venues come to you yes, then? Yes. Oh, yes. that's so yeah. cool. And <laughs> then we um, have a meeting with them, they ask for their targets and uh, what they're looking for. And most of the time is they would like to entertain people and they would like our community members to uh, be invited by Expat Connect and we always bring the members to them. So I have invited uh, around 50 of Expect Connect members at one of the events, 
And then also there was um, um, BMW AGMC on Shakeside Road mm-hmm. to showroom. That was a spectacular event. And our, all our members were so happy to look at the cars and the technology of BMW. And they gave away the prices as well. So it was like a oh fabulous God, Was event. it a car? <laughs> I missed that one. It was a, actually a golf sets. Oh. Yeah, a golf sets and the accessories. They had lifestyle accessories within uh, the showroom, they have a uh, store where you can purchase. Wow. Yeah, so all the time we keep the brands uh, on the top, like we look at what they're looking for and we invite the people. We just don't randomly invite. We invite people who would be interested. In okay. Them. So when uh, for a golf event, we chose the golf community mm-hmm. to announce the event mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. everybody who's interested in golf we, mm-hmm. uh, will organize the event in that community. That's mm-hmm. nice. That's mm-hmm. very nice. So, Shumaila, you are a connector and a master in networking. You're the queen of the expat community. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> coming to Dubai that doesn't know where to go, what to do, what paper is required, what is the process, or whatever, they all come to you. Can you tell us how to network properly? How to make it, you know, like work for us? Useful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, at our expat connect events, our networking events, when people are coming new to Dubai. Mm -hmm. First of all, they always contact me on Expect Connect's uh, website by message and they tell me that uh, they're coming to Dubai for the first time and uh, they have joined this uh, uh, business or like they have joined this company and they would like to network more with other people and I invite them and then when they arrive, I make sure that they are being introduced to our regular members and they are not just like standing there in the corner yeah. feeling, feeling shy and many of the people they don't do not know how to network it's like, true. so how some of do it? some of them just uh, give away the business cards and not even connect themselves to other people okay. so it's very very important because all our most of the people are new to dubai and uh, they're strangers they don't know anything about each other so the most important thing is to connect with each other by letting each other know about what their lives are, what, where they're coming from, what their experiences are. Even though you're coming to network and looking for a job, I recommend people not to talk about that I'm looking for a job mm-hmm. straight away. Mm-hmm. Let them know about your uh, your experiences, your mm-hmm. qualities, your expertise, and then they are going to, at no- networking event, everybody knows what people are there for. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you are going to get the opportunity right away. But first, you need to be honest with people. Let them know about yourself. Shine through that. And then after that, you... And uh, during Expect Connect events as well, we make sure that nobody uh, is having an awkward situation. Mm -hmm. So, for example, as somebody who we know for a long time, a regular member, so we just like go to them and make sure the person who is new is being introduced by each other through us. Mm-hmm. So there is like a trust, mm-hmm. um, uh, there's trust increases over there. So yeah, so the, these are also the parts of networking that we help our other members to help to. So we shouldn't go straight to business. No. Art, we actually need to connect first, yes. show ourselves or true selves. Absolutely, absolutely. Care for the person that is in front of us. Yes. And then eventually, before you go, this is my business card, you don't need yeah. anything. Kind of a thing, right? Yeah. And many times you meet people from your own country as well. Oh. So, and we have communities, for example, country communities as well. For example, I'm from Pakistan, my friends from Italy and Spain. So you can join the, those communities and get to know your own people as well. Yeah. So, as I mentioned before, Expat Connect has 400 different communities that connects you with your profession, your interests, the area that you live in, and even the building that you live in, and your country itself as well. So, like, there are many different options that you can connect with people. So, like, it filters everything. Is it only in Dubai? Is it only in Dubai? Currently only in Dubai, yes. Here is the massive. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How did your social influence change your life? Oh, um, very drastically. Like uh, now, I'm invited to many events, um, even social networking events, fashion events, iftars. So I'm getting to, uh, I'm meeting so many celebrities and also 
people who are running the businesses in Dubai, so mm-hmm. on, and I learn a lot from them. So it's a it's a fabulous uh, uh, <laughs> feeling. So I get to know uh, so many brands as well in Dubai, the local brands, uh, mm-hmm. the fashion designers in mm-hmm. the UAE. Um, it's a, it's an, another world for me because coming from Pakistan and also living in South Korea, my entire like half of my life, I would say for nine years, it's mm-hmm. a long time. And uh, UAE is like they have very different culture. They have very dri- different uh, dressing. So if you look at my pictures in the past mm-hmm. and now, so like Korean uh, Korean pictures were all Korean style, and mm-hmm. UA pictures are like mostly. Like UA style, mm. I'm wearing long dresses and curling my hair, and even I started doing my eyeliner when I moved to Dubai. Okay, yeah. No, I did not. I used only uh, mascara, Elizabeth, and uh, very light lipstick and all that. And here is just like I can do it because yeah. everybody <laughs> else is doing it, and it looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Many times when I'm going to any hotel. And uh, the value guys, they they also try to speak with me in Arabic, and I was like, do I start? I haven't started to look Arabic. <laughs> you're, you're transforming. You're transforming. <laughs> uh, you hosted a lot of events. Yes. How do you prepare yourself to actually not to be nervous and say the, precisely what you want to say? Well, um, again, back to my childhood. <laughs> I used to participate in a lot of uh, debates, competitions, oh. and microphone, I'm not scared of holding it. So this is the reason my first event when I did in 2016 with uh, Expat Connects, even my boss was surprised. Ooh. How could you do that? Or you held the <laughs> mic and you're speaking and you're entertaining people. And I was like, yeah, it's normal for me. I can do it. <laughs> and, uh, no, I don't get nervous at all because I think everybody is equal. All of Everybody is my friend as well, so there's nothing to be afraid of. No, I know not to be nervous about. I think uh, for most of the mortals, <laughs> a microphone normally is yeah, it's intimidating. Yeah, it takes yeah. some time actually to lose fear and be able to you know feel comfortable and confident. Uh, When you have, when you're holding a mic, on. now in radio it's, it's easier, like yeah. for example what we are doing now in the podcast. But it's true that when you are out there and you are also physically yeah. <laughs> on top of a stage and and talking, it's true that it requires uh, yeah, yeah self confidence, self confidence, of self confidence. Plus, you need uh, knowledge as well you're talking about that's also very important mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, you need to know about the program as well the event that you are a part of then uh, you need to know all the details of the program that you are confident enough to talk about it as yeah, well so, yeah i mean yeah. guide the audience yes yes the yes. different stages yes. and it's amazing when i see people coming in when i'm the red carpet host and i know people like yourself uh-huh. and uh, uh, other designers it's just, just naturally i start asking them questions because I know currently what they're doing. Right. So it's also very important to stay connected if you are in this field. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. True. Emmy the Fashionista is going to launch both on the website. Oh, yes. Exciting. Yes. <laughs> You're working with brands, doing photos and videos, tutorials. Yes. What kind of investments you have to do to keep actually your field interesting? Well, all the time come up with uh, lots of creative ideas. I study the brands a lot. Mm-hmm. I pay attention what they're looking for, what their target audience is, and I never choose the brand which I don't know anything about okay. or which does not align with my interest and my uh, fashion style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I always, it's it's a lot easier for me. For example, there are many brands that I've been using for a long time. I'm the mm-hmm. consumer of those brands, so those brands I automatically work with them because I know know them for a long time yeah and if there are new brands which are uh, i don't know much about them so i study but they have to have to be what my style is so i don't want to share something that which uh i don't like or i don't believe in so my audience is very important for me so whenever i'm sharing and i'm sharing something real that's coming from me okay and economically also you have to do some investment Yes, I do. I um, do with the videos and the photos and choosing the locations. 
So I work uh, with uh, very talented videographers and photographers, and uh, and also we're a very great team so when it comes to that. I mean, choosing the location, outfit, styling, makeup, everything just like comes in together. Oh yeah. wow! Oh wow! Um, what are your immediate plans? My immediate plans first to launch the website. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Number one, please. Number one, <laughs> and um, yeah, getting. Uh, more brands involved mm-hmm. with my Emirates Fashionator Fashionista project and mm-hmm. also my YouTube talk show mm-hmm. which I'm going to start very very soon mm-hmm. and there will be fashion, lifestyle and beauty segments in that mm-hmm. and it will be it will go live once a month mm-hmm. and it will be on my YouTube so I'm very excited about it. And also that. we have a little secret to my lesson. We're hosting one of the channel one within the YouTube channel of Dubai Fashion News. She's gonna have a program also that we're working on it and finalizing, but it's gonna be very exciting and very nice. So Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I love Dubai Fashion News actually. So it's it keeps me updated all the time for current news about yeah. Dubai, what's happening in the fashion and beauty industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's us. Um, from the outside it seems like influencers have a great life everything is easy there is also some areas that are not as pretty or is all the time sunny (laughs) all (laughs) kinds of world no no it's just like uh, I start to feel like a celebrity life kind of thing okay Uh, so it's not it's not easy at all. First of all, like you need to wake up, and for in, for influencers, we're planning everything. Okay. There are, there is no makeup artist who is doing that. So sometimes, not sometimes, many times, I'm doing my own makeup. I'm doing my own hair. So planning and time management is very very important. Mm-hmm. I'm the one who is calling the videographers, photographers, and uh, uh, and also when you're ready. At uh, the venue, you're doing the photo shoots, and uh, after delivering those photos and posting it online, you have to face uh, good comments, but also there are negative comments sometimes. Oh, trolls! Yeah, absolutely. Ah. But uh, um, when you sign up to be on social media, yeah. this means you have to be very, very strong to face all this and I would like to share it with everybody that you cannot feel disappointed that oh that comment was not good you have you have to have the courage to face it and the most beautiful part about this is when you have the very loyal followers yeah they actually sometimes reply yeah. to those trolls yeah, as well exactly. so that makes you feel that there are people who really really care about you they're not just commenting yeah. they also uh, know you. Very they're well. their supporters. Yes, absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. So there, uh, it's not always the uh, happy, happy time. You, whenever I'm going to the events as well, I need to plan the entire day because I have three to four events a day. So morning event, afternoon, evening, and then uh, after so parties as well. <laughs> so I need to. Sometimes I uh, keep. Uh, dresses in my car what if I need to go to this certain type of event so sometimes like of course like you need to think about the culture in UAE as well if you're going outdoor event which is a Mm -hmm. public event Mm -hmm. so you need to uh, wear something which is like according to the culture when you're going to a a venue which is uh, like in a hotel so it should be accordingly and according to the brands as well who are inviting me I choose the dresses uh, yeah very very cautiously i need to see that it should align their events as well this uh, i want to uh, dig a little bit more on what you were saying because we are facing as a society yes. lately a lot of uh, i don't know moving but for teenagers they they care so much about the likes and the, and the, they look for this uh, yeah i guess recognition or confirmation about themselves on social media that is very scary. Yeah. It's very, very scary. So I'm glad that you're saying whenever there is a bad comment or there is some hater or some troll messing your feed or whatever, just block them and, and keep your life because you, you don't have to take it, you know, you don't have to take as, as truth what they're saying. They're yes. just people that have issues themselves. And, exactly. And, uh, but this is something that uh, our young, our young um, adolescents and teenagers are going through and this is something that is touching, yeah? 
Yeah, you don't need to worry about that. And some of the comments, if you can face it, just reply to yeah. them. Because if they say something about your appearance or like uh, anything they say, it, and if you can reply to them, yes, do reply to them and make their lives easier too, to teach them a lesson as well. Mm -hmm. That you're mm -hmm. not supposed to say this to people like this. It could hurt. But in my case, I take it positively. Okay, but the other people who do not take it positively, you have to either block them or not worry about them. Just ignore, mm -hmm. ignore like, yeah. you know, the most, uh, the least you can do is yeah. ignore. Yeah. And focus on the people who are really there for you. Yeah, and bring yeah. something positive Absolutely. to your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Not the trolls. Yeah. You have a very personal style and uh, you keep true to it all the time. This is something I love. You change, uh, yeah, you say you change outfits, even three, four times a day because of the different events that you have to attend. How do you select the brands that you want to work with? It should be all the time my personal style. For example, I really like the dresses which are knee length mm -hmm. or longer dresses because UAE culture is like this. Mm -hmm. So, And uh, now I have changed my hair color as well. So it's just uh, I like to always choose something different and fresh. Mm -hmm. So I'm also thinking to ha dye my hair a little grayish or <gasps> maybe sometimes... Uh, a couple of months ago I dyed my hair blue. Oh, I love it was like light blue. Like I want that. to have unicorn hair. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if, if I, we did an article on Guy Dang and I love his work, honestly. He's yeah. amazing. I really would love to have unicorn hair. <laughs> All in, the colors of the rainbow. In fashion and beauty, you can, you can go crazy. But yeah. uh, know your limits as well. You cannot do, overdo it yeah. as well at the same time. And the, uh, about you my. Can. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> and what are, as, as as long as you are happy about it, you look in the mirror and then you say, yeah. and I never follow any trends or any fashion. If oh, I see that, um, okay, people, yesterday we went to the turban store mm -hmm. and there were African turbans and then there was also Arabian turbans mm -hmm. as well. And I actually never tried turbans before mm -hmm. and I know that people wear it. But uh, yesterday when I tried it, I was like, okay, now I'm going to start wearing it. So it's not like if I look at on the TV or uh, somewhere and people are, this is in trend, people are wearing it a lot, yeah. and then I choose it. No, I choose it when I think like, okay, now I can wear this or I like about it. There are many times I have the dresses, I buy them, I put them in my closet, and uh, maybe two, three months later I wear them. Mm -hmm. I style them differently. And my entire closet is... Uh, I have clothes for even five years. So <laughs> I take them out and style them differently all the time. And you cannot even tell that I you saw that dress like before as well. So this is that's a magic so cool. Thing. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, because I think I think we we tend to um use the dress almost one way only and, and that's yeah. it. But there's you can have so much fun with actually exactly yeah, putting something on top or actually covering the bottom yes. and using all the other top. There's so much fun you can have with sure, that, sure, sure. with dresses. Yeah. But it all comes like with fun. If you're having fun with it, uh, with it I would highly recommend for you to do it. But if you're stressing yourself out, oh, oh I saw Shmala doing that, I should be doing it. No. Um, no. Then, oh, you can call me and ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you. Recommendations, please. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> your phone will be hot. <laughs> You'll give your number. <laughs> So one question I really want to know, because now you're starting Eminence Fashionista, where do you see it in five years? Where would you want to be in five years? Oh, my, in five years, I would like to design my own clothing line. Oh, wow. I'm and sell it in your, own, in your website? Yes, yes. I'm already working on it. I have lots of creative ideas. I'm just waiting for the right time. I never haste. I always wait for the right time. It's Life is not going to end. I don't know how you have time for everything you're doing already. So I don't <laughs> really... One step at a time. How are you going to get <laughs> patience as well? And uh, what I'm doing right now is getting to know many different brands. So it's also education for me yeah. as well. And uh, it's amazing to see how people uh, from struggling to success like, like this, how they move. And... Uh, 
it also depends on your market as well. UAE, Middle Eastern market is like a completely different market as compared to uh, other markets that I've been exposed to before. So, uh, yes, so once that I'm ready, the time is right. Yes, mm. I would like to launch my clothing line. That would be awesome. How can our listeners and readers get in touch with you? Through my website and my Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram, I'm always very active. If you're sending me a message within a day or two days, I always reply the messages. And it's at Emirates Fashionista. Emirates Fashionista. Yes, that's great. Perfect, Shamila, such a pleasure. Thank you so much for everything. We learned so much. Now Thank I'm going to so go switch on the phone me. and start seeing Instagram. <laughs> Any questions, please feel free to ask me. Yeah. I'm also learning about social media and uh, I would love to answer your questions as well. Yep. So. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shamila. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So that was our interview with Shamila Morer. I don't know you, but I now will get right on my phone and try some of her Insta tricks. From the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for being there. I really hope you enjoyed the interview. If you liked it, hit the subscribe button and give us your five star rating on iTunes. Your five stars will allow this podcast to grow and get more visibility within iTunes. And don't forget to leave a comment. Your feedback is super important for us. We want to know your thoughts to keep on improving. You can subscribe to our digital magazine, DubaiFashionNews.com. There you can find also all the archives with past podcasts in case you want to catch up and learn, for example, how Victoria St. Pierre managed to get her shoes in Royal Feet or how Ava Fashion managed to get in Galleria Lafayette. If you want to communicate with us, be part of the program or are interested in a particular topic, just send us an email to hello at DubaiFashionNews.com or use our Facebook or Instagram accounts. Thank you and see you in the next podcast.